to order the Monday, January 13th, 2020 um, Policies and Party Priorities Committee meeting to order. Can I have, um, start off at 2.1, can I have an approval of the agenda? Councillor Kirby? Yep, I recommend that Monday, January 13th, 2020 Policies and Priorities Committee meeting agenda be approved as presented. Seconder? Councillor Medinsky? Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moving down to 3.1, adoption of minutes. I want to be able to make that recommendation. <coughs> Councillor Majinski? That the Tuesday, November 12th, 2019 <coughs> Policies and Priority Committee meeting minutes be adopted as presented. Seconder? Councillor Howe? Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Four, business arising from the minutes. Any uh, business councillors from the <coughs> Okay. Moving forward, um, petitions and delegations. Um, before we begin, I'd like to remind our petitions and delegations, we have 15 minutes for your presentation, which includes um, question and answer period. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to invite the Tumbler Ridge Mountain Bike Association um, to present to council on their latest updates and the grant and aid application. Welcome, Jen. Thank you. First of all, I just want to quickly say thank you very much uh, for hosting us today. So my name's Anthony and this is uh, Cameron. We're uh, both representing the Tumble Ridge uh, Mountain Bike Association in town here. So uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to quickly move along to the agenda here. So Cam, don't mind hitting the slide there. Thank you. So I'm just going to provide a quick overview of what you guys can expect for today and then uh, we'll dive right into things. So first up, we're going to be providing some updates uh, regarding both the tenure and the uh, trail master plan, um, following which we're going to be discussing the location and design uh, regarding both of the trails and pump track initiative, and then uh, as well as some preliminary design uh, drafts that we've been exploring. Um, thirdly, uh, we're going to be discussing funding, so the sources of capital that we've been raising over the last little while. Uh, specifically for the pump truck, uh, and then we'll move along to a Q&A answer at the end. But uh, throughout the presentation, if there's any pressing questions, please feel free to let us know, and we'll be happy to address them um, throughout. So uh, to start things off, we're going to be discussing uh, some trail updates. So we'll turn that over to, uh, yeah. All right, so we'll start off and just by talking about our 10-year application with BC Rec Sites and Trails. We've currently progressed as far as we can with them and they're awaiting our updated trails master plan before we can sort of go any further. So before we can get that finer, final 10 year approval, they need to have a good understanding of where our trails are going to be and how exactly they're going to run uh, so they can do a little bit more assessment of them. Uh, so our 10 year area is outlined in the green section on the map. We're hoping to have that finalized 10 year by the end of 2020 and the idea behind that is hopefully we'll be getting our finalized trails master plan by around February and we can start that process moving forward again. Um, we also had a very successful stakeholder meeting at the end of sort of fall 2019 there and I want to thank everybody who was able to attend that as well. Um, we got some really good feedback and we're working with our uh, stakeholders, particularly the woodlot owner, to figure out how we can work together to responsibly develop that land while minimizing our impact and making sure it's still usable for him as well. The second item of this is the master plan. I just want to say, start off by saying that this is a preliminary draft. We've got a lot of different trails coming down the slope here. Uh, our green trails are the beginner, blue moving to intermediate. Then we have our blacks and then our black and blues, which are the very, very advanced trails. So something for everybody to ride. Um, we got these preliminary drafts from the Canadian Ramp Company, and we're hoping to have that final plan again, moving into February here as well. Um, the really key thing here is that Canadian Ramp Company really went above and beyond for us. They didn't just do the sort of initial designs for the trails, they also are going to do the cost estimates for each of the trails, giving us the preliminary amounts for how much each one is going to take to build, and then uh, doing the design for our preliminary uh, pump track and um, the, some of the initial trails that will go, go with that as well. 
and now we'll move on into the pump track uh, with the proposed location and funding structures looking like at present. So progressive trail design came up and did a site visit with us. Uh, and this was thanks to the council connections that were made at FCM. So we want to say thank you very much for passing those along. Uh, it was really good for us and we made some pretty quick relationships. Um, they scouted our tenure area, providing us with the design that you had just seen. And they also did a full assessment of all the pump track locations that we had preliminarily scouted out in town as well as some that we hadn't and gave us sort of these conclusions. So, um, we had over 10 different locations scouted while they were here. Uh, the one that they recommended was the Pioneer Loop location, and that was for the following six reasons. First off was downtown revitalization, the capability of the location to really draw people back into the downtown core and facilitate um, some revitalization through some of the shops and other economic benefits, which we'll get to a little bit later. Second was parking. The Legion parking lot directly across from the area would provide ample parking for the structure as we begin to scale it up. Next was safety. Uh, this area a little bit more insulated into the downtown core, away from most of the major highways, unlike some of the other sites we're considering by out by the Saddle Club or further down by the trend. So just a little bit safer area, lower speed limits, and we can of course make changes as necessary. Next was environmental. As we see when we get to the preliminary design, it really, uh, they worked within the footprint of the area and were able to do it without minim or were able to do it with minimal disturbances to the soil surrounding trees and so <coughs> as we were hoping to do we're going to be minimizing that environmental impact. The other was accessibility. There's a lot of different other public services that are in the immediate area that are going to make it possible for us to have it there. And the other side of it is with the community center having washrooms and the visitor center ha having washrooms. It's something that again serves to draw from that location and pull into the downtown core and have people passing through those local businesses. And then finally was uh, future development potential. It's just with where it's situated, it's close enough that it can be easily linked up to future infrastructure along the ridge, future riding infrastructure around the town and connecting to some of the major trails in the area as well. And I'll hand it over to Anthony to go through the preliminary design. Thanks. Dan. So one of the major focuses that we've had throughout this entire project is to make sure that the track is accessible for all audiences, regardless of age and capabilities. So uh, this translates into the design that we uh, had made up from our supplier. <coughs> As you can see on the map here, I'm going to kind of break things down a little bit so you know what parts what. Uh, the green area is pretty much untouched, unpaved. Uh, regions and then everything that's gray is actually paved. So the lighter gray is the actual track uh, and there would be bumps throughout that people would be going up and down on to practice their pumping skills. And you'll notice however that there's not a ton of curving. Now this was done intentionally so that uh, we're catering to a variety of different skill levels. By having some of these straighter sections it's going to allow for the elderly, children, and people who are just starting to learn how to ride uh, to be able to handle track without uh, having developed a ton of skills prior to attempting to ride it. Uh, additionally, in order to cater to some of those higher skill levels, you'll notice that the darker gray areas um, kind of almost connect the different points on the track. So that way you would be able to actually customize your ride and this would be suitable for more advanced riders. So with this design in particular, we're catering to a variety of different audiences, so it is accessible for everybody that wants to partake in riding the track. So um, moving on here, Cam, thank you. So just as a quick uh, funding breakdown here. So the total uh, project with a paved pump track in particular is $250,000. So where these costs are coming from is $200,000 approximately for the actual paving of the pump track itself followed by about $50,000 worth of other uh, costs associated with signage, garbage bins, uh, benches, picnic tables, everything that's going to make it a little bit more of a communal place where people can gather instead of simply ride. Uh, so Cam, if you wouldn't mind hitting that next piece there. So where we're actually uh, getting some of this funding, uh, so 52% we're hoping will come from the Tumbler Ridge Mountain Bike Association. 
Uh, so we've already secured $80,000 and we are likely to secure another 50 uh, between some of the grants and fundraising activities that we have coming up over the next few months. So in total, we would be raising $130,000 and in return, we're hoping that you guys will be able to help us out with some of the remaining costs and contribute an additional 120K for a little less than half the cost of the actual pump track. So in some sense, it's like a 50% a discount, if you will. Um, anyway, if there's no questions with that, we can move on to the uh, next slide here. So part of the reason that we think the pump track would be a great initiative in town uh, can be broken down into three different categories, economic, social, and health. So starting with the economics, we can expect an increased tourism, uh, or sorry, we can expect increased tourism opportunities, both locally and regionally, as we start to develop the district into a mountain bike um, facility. Uh, in addition, uh, there should be additional business opportunities that start to come out of uh, developing the pump track and associated trails, including bike shops, rental shops, restaurants, and other things to support these types of activities, as well as the amount of people that would be drawn into the town center itself. Uh, so there's a couple other uh, items listed there, but in the interest of time, we're going to move on to the next category, and I'm going to turn that over to Cam to discuss some of the social benefits here. So socially, one of the biggest aspects is the attractability. So child use, family-friendly recreation, accessible for all ages, everybody is able to come out and ride this pump track. Really affordable and inclusive recreation, it's going to be at um, no charge for entry, and just allowing people to get out and, and ride with their families. Uh, providing an alternative for youth at the skate park. We know that overcrowding has been a bit of an issue and with that there was a little bit of vandalism and bullying and we're hoping that a more diverse crowd that would likely occupy the pump track would be able to help rectify the, those issues as well. Uh, pride for local achievements and the growing of the biking community. This pump track is going to form the cornerstone from which the rest of our mountain biking network is going to be launched. So we start here and we start expanding outwards, getting the downhill trails going, getting some of the cross country trails going, but this will be the central hub that people maybe start with their friends at and start their rides at. And I'll hand it over to Anthony for the health benefits. Thanks. So just to quickly go over, having a pump track is going to hopefully attract people to engage in different physical activities that wouldn't otherwise be available to them. Uh, as a result, uh, we can expect uh, potential for lower cardiovascular uh, concerns or chronic diseases associated with that. Um, in addition with improved health, both mentally and physically, we're hoping that this may have a minor impact on the economic costs associated with providing health care. Um, oftentimes in that field in particular, it's good to take a proactive instead of a reactive approach. And we believe firmly that having facilities where people can engage in this type of physical activity will be that proactive approach that we need in order to cut down costs and build a healthy community moving forward. So how, do, how exactly do we make this happen? We've got a couple of different asks coming from the TRMBA in order to see the sort of finalized full benefits of the contract project. The first ask is going to be for the zoning and the land. So at this point, we're going to be requesting that uh, we get zoning approval to, to construct the pump track at the Pioneer Loop location. The second ask would be funding. Um, TRMB is going to be able to provide a little over the majority of the funding, but we'd be looking to the district to provide uh, the remainder. We do have contingencies in place if that's not available to us, but that's what we're hoping to do at this point. And then hopefully through that collaboration and with those two milestones, we'll be able to uh, provide a, an attraction for both the region and something that the local community, community can enjoy and be proud of. So uh, that pretty well concludes our presentation. So we'd just like to end with a quick thank you for your time as well as your support. And again, thank you to the councillors who have uh, come out and participated in some of the mountain bike activities over the last little while. So I'd like to turn it over to you guys to see if you have any questions for us. Okay. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for your presentation. Um, does anybody have any questions for the <coughs> delegation? Councillor Howe? Yeah. Uh, first one is uh, maintenance of the track. What's the plan for maintenance of the track? Is the uh, Mountain Bike Association going to take care of that, or is that beyond the district? Uh, after the construction of the... Um, after the construction phase was complete, we were going to be handing control of the, of the facility to the district for long-term maintenance. 
Right. That was actually part of the reason we decided to towards a paved track, uh, because that would actually substantially reduce the maintenance costs moving forward. Uh, whereas the original dirt plan, uh, there was going to be much higher maintenance required. So with the paved version, it should cost substantially less year after year. One moment, Councillor Howe. Um, so my question, I have a question for you, gentlemen. Um, if you are not able to re receive this funding from the district, will you still continue for, um, forward with a uh, unpaved track? Yes. So essentially what would happen if we don't receive this funding from the district is we would section the project into different phases. Uh, the first would be the initial construction of the pump track, which would be unpaved, and then we would proceed forward with additional fundraising uh, until we were able to secure the additional funds to do the paving process. But there would be additional maintenance costs in between that lapse time because it might not be an immediate securing of funds to get that paving completed. Thank you. Councilor Howe? So the $200,000 is, you talk about paving, but does that include all the contouring and dirt work that has to be done and then prep for paving? Yep. All included in the 200000 Okay. That's correct. One more, the, the expansion. Have you guys thought about expansion? Like it has the, the, the way you've designed the track, will it allow you for expansion in the future should we need that? Um, not necessarily of the track specifically, but there is plans for expansion of that involving that entire um, Pioneer Woodlot area. So there's uh, additional things we can add on there in terms of a bike park, a skills park, and some additional beginner trails that are all that could fit within that specific wooded area. Okay. And then along with the connection to the additional downhill trails and other infrastructure in the future. Anybody else? Councilor Marginski. Thank you, Effie, Mayor Norbury. Um, so this pump track design, I know when we were talking to Canadian Ramp Company, um, they've done these tracks all over the world. And we were kind of um, wanting to be able to host events. So with this style of track, because it is long, it's very elongated, looks like it'd be fairly fast for an advanced rider. Would this cater to a lot of uh, events and we could cater to that as well down the road? Yeah, that was one of the reasons in selecting the fire near the locality as well, is because of the additional parking and other capabilities that would allow us to host events there. Um, along with the track itself, it's going to be built to sort of a Red Bull specification, and they are, <clears throat> so it would be open to hosting <coughs> events. As you said earlier, it would be a little bit of a fast track, but I'd like to think that the fastest track in the Northeast might be a little bit of an attraction for people. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, well, we've reached yeah. our... Uh... We've reached our, our time, sir. So thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. Um, yeah, look look forward to what you guys can do for us. Yeah, always. Thank, thank you very you much for having us. If you guys have any questions in the meantime, feel, please feel free to forward them our way. Okay. <clears throat> so let's move down to uh, 5.2, the Renumeration Renum Committee. Roxanne Julik and other committee members. Here to verbally gonna, report on their. Sit back there. <laughs> Sorry. I think they're just going to sit back there. So we all are here. If, if you'd like to speak. Um, okay. Well, it'd just be Roxanne. <laughs> it'd just be me. Most. Okay. Thank you. Um, we all just were really <coughs> grateful for the opportunity to give you guys some feedback. So we appreciated that uh, opportunity, and I can say that we took everything and we twisted it upside down, sideways, and turned it inside out to come up with the recommendations. So. You guys have the cover letter and the report in front of you, so I'm just going to open it up if you guys have questions. That's why I wanted to come in case you did have some questions. Beyond that, I don't need to read the report to you. <clears throat> okay. Um, so does any uh, councillors have any questions for the for Roxanne? Councillor Howe? Yeah, so I thought the report you guys provided for us was really good, and I agree with the, almost everything you guys have put in here. A lot of these things I voted against originally. I didn't think that we needed uh, as we were coming through as counselors. Uh, one thing I didn't see touched on in here, perhaps I've missed it, uh, and this is to me is the only thing that uh, I think that we need to talk about for an increase uh, for counselors is uh, is that, is that something that you guys discussed at all? It wasn't anything that came out in the report, but it was something actually that we talked about and we felt that I can say I think we felt that you guys should be entitled to that for sure. I don't think there's any kind of drop anywhere that you don't get reimbursed for your cell phone. I can tell you from uh, in my current job, the Secretary Treasurer gives us a set amount at the beginning of the year, and, and that's actually one of our policies as well. She sets the amount and we get reimbursed that. 
or we can actually have a phone uh, bought and paid for, of course. Like we could have a plan through the district, the school district. So just to give you an idea of what we do up there, but absolutely, yeah. All right, thank you and, and the group uh, for your time. Absolutely, it's very much appreciated. It gives us another option or another view from the outside looking in. Much appreciated. Any counselors have any questions? Mayor Bertrand, anything? Yes. Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you, Roxanne, and everybody for, for all the time that you put into this. Um, great report. Uh, just a quick question. I'm just curious on how much uh, engagement with the community there was uh, throughout this process. I think I know myself. I talked to the people in my kind of circle. Um, I would say... Oh, and I'm looking back at the other committee members and they're all nodding their heads. Yeah, so basically our day-to-day -day, our day-to-day -day conversations that you would have with anybody, I think that we're all fairly active uh, members in the community. So uh, I know I got a fair amount of feedback. There wasn't anything formal, though. Okay, is there anything else? From okay, thank you. Yeah, just again, thank you for your time. I really appreciate the report. You're welcome. All right, well, thank you, uh, Roxanne and, and other members of the committee. Um, you know, you came back with answers to some questions that we had, and we appreciate uh, the report. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Councilor Howe? Just a question to staff. So how, how do we go about taking this and putting it to a vote? Can we move that to our next meeting? Well, um, I believe there's. Um, we're going to be bringing it up again in reports, and then uh, at that mo at that point, we could uh, potentially ask for a motion. Are we allowed to vote on something like that today? We so. can. It's a P and P, isn't it? We can make a motion to be added to the next regular council meeting, which we can vote on at that point okay. in time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Our plan right now, Councillor Howe, is to uh, bring this report back with an administrative report. As well, I don't think that would be ready for the next meeting, the budget meeting for January 20th. The agenda is already out. It may be February 3rd, um, and maybe a little bit after that, just depends on things go. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so we'll move down to uh, correspondence 6.1 um, Grizzly Valley ATV Club. There's a piece of correspondence from the ATV Club dated December 15th, 2019. Um, requesting council to purchase a trailer to clean up legally dumped garbage in the backcountry. I'm going to make a recommendation. Councilor Majinski. Uh, that council received the correspondence from Grizzly Valley ATV Club for information. Seconder. All right, I'll second it. Um, any discussion on whether to move this for information or discussion? Councillor Howe? Yeah, I would like to move it for discussion, so I'll be voting against it. Um, Councillor uh, I'd Kirby? also like to bring it forward for discussion. Okay. So in that case, I recommend that we uh, we vote down this uh, move for information and uh, someone can make an alternative. Um, so in the matter of bringing this up for information, all four opposed? Okay. So is anybody... Interested in making an alternative to the recommendation? Councillor Howe. Council received the correspondence from the Grizzly Valley ATV Club for discussion. A seconder. Councillor Kirby. <clears throat> Any more discussion on that? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, it is open for discussion. <clears throat> Sir Asaf. Councillor Howe. Yes, so uh, my thoughts on it are you know, the Grizzly Valley ATV Club has gone out and organized quite a few of these uh, garbage cleanups around the community. I was involved with them a few years ago and uh, was able to bring them some of my heavy equipment to help them get stuff cleaned up. Um, it's a great way for uh, companies to get involved, to help out and, and, and give back a little bit. Um, but also too, companies take on risk and liability when they go out and do this, <clears throat> which some of us you know, don't mind taking that on. But if we were able to provide a trailer like this with some type of a winch system on it, a tilt trailer that they could pull some of these derelict vehicles onto and clean up our back country, I mean, they're doing that free of charge. You know, and I mean, I, I think there's some benefits of getting this type of a trailer. 
I don't know what the right way is, though. Do we go and get the trailer and, and donate it to them? Or does the district own it and, like, the district can utilize it for district things and be insured through the district? And then can we lend that out? There's a lot of stuff in there that I don't really know le legally how that would work. <clears throat> I'm open to either idea, but I definitely think that this is a community <clears throat> group for a small uh, donation is going out doing some really fantastic cleanup. Uh, this type of cleanup for, you know, some of the stuff they're doing could cost thousands of dollars. You know, they're going out there and shoveling up oils and putting it in buckets and taking it to the dump and parts and pieces of plastic and fuels and equipment, garbage, vehicles, you name it. And uh, I, I just think it's a, it's a good reflection of our council to give back to community groups that are doing these types of things. Thank you, Councillor Howe. Um, I'd like to jump in first, Councillor Kirby, <coughs> Jinsky as well. Um, I agree with you, Councillor Howe. I mean, I'm I'm recognize the all the extra effort that um, the Grizzly Valley ATV Club. You know, if I if I named particular individuals, you know, we might be leaving people out. Um, so I think that we should be looking at um, giving them this uh, piece of um, somehow working on arrangement for this piece of equipment because helping out their community should not come at a personal cost. And I think with um, with them removing these pieces of garbage or in some cases vehicles are damaging their own equipment and I mean we should uh, we shouldn't be putting that upon people um, since since we are just in a discussion a discussion point um, my thoughts would would potentially be if we could work out um, some sort of partnership agreement something something in paper outlining the the roles and responsibilities of each organization if we choose to purchase this for ourselves and let them use it um, we do have a, a storage yard in uh, in public works now that it could potentially be stored at. Um, I am not sure how it could, uh, the ATV club is willing to, um, they're willing to uh, pay for all the additional costs on it. I'm not too sure how that would work if we would own it or if we should give it to them, but uh, yeah. Um, so, Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree too, this is, you know, we're, we can be really thankful that the ATV club has been cleaning up our backcountry. Um, I'm wondering if they have approached the community forest. That could be a good avenue to go down. <clears throat> and then council is, you know, like I, like I think that's a, a good stream to start with myself. Councilor Majinski. Thank you, uh, Mayor Norbury. Chair. Chair. <laughs> um, so they, uh, Councillor Howe mentioned that there was quite a few uh, times that they've gone out over the years. I'd like to see a more concrete number on how many times per year, because I know last year I seen one post on it, and it was about vehicles. And I understand that it takes a lot of effort to get those burned up, junked out vehicles, whatever, oil cans, oil drums. I've seen them in the backcountry myself. Um, I'd like to know also what kind of community involvement they have reached out to if they have been reaching out to businesses, if they have been reaching out to other user groups to help get involved, so it's not just one or two guys going out there with a flat deck and a piece of equipment hauling stuff out. What if one of them gets injured, hurts the back, etc.? cetera? Um, and were we the first stop for them to look for money? Do they have they fundraised? Have they looked at other options? Because there are initiatives through the province to help clean up the backcountry, and I'd like to see if they've contacted them and whether they're willing to put in some of the, the funding instead of us covering the full cost of one trailer. I understand there's going to be costs on in insuring it and uh, repairs and stuff like that, especially if it is fairly large and getting up, beat up around in the bush. Um, but I just had a few concerns on that and I just, I'm not 100% convinced on us paying for a trailer for one single user group when um, it could be used for other groups as well, potentially. And so where would it be stored if it's going to be for them, if it's going to be at one individual's home and they will not be able to release it to other user groups and stuff like that. So I'd like to iron a bunch of that out before we can say, here's here's your money for a trailer to be voted on. So, Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Lehman. Thank you, Acting Chair. Um, I think if uh, the district does decide to buy a trailer, I think we'd be best to keep control of it and if somebody wants to use it they have to obviously see somebody at the district and then be able to use it but I think just to buy it and then
give it away. I think that's kind of a, a not a waste, but I think like uh, Councilor Martinsky said, maybe somebody else could use it as well. And I think the district district could probably use it. But I think, uh, again, Councilor Kirby too, I think maybe there's other avenues where they could get funding to. But I still think one way or the other, if we buy it, I think we should keep control of it. Councilor Howe? <clears throat> I think we need to keep in mind this is a volunteer group. They, they, they don't make a lot of money. They don't bring in a lot of money. And what the service that they have provided free of charge till now, I can attest to it because I was part of it. We hauled, I hauled seven vehicles on one day from our racetrack down to the dump. <laughs> and I think the racetrack at this time is, belongs to the district of Tumbler Ridge. It's our gravel pit or portion of it there is. Um, like, like to me, like there in, there in my mind, there is no question. I've seen the work that they've done. I've been involved in it. I've helped them out uh, and they've cleaned up like some gravel pits and, and some other areas and, and quite frankly it's frustrating to me either that uh, we as a district cannot go out and enforce bylaws or something within our own community when vehicles like this are left derelict and uh, that that to me is beyond frustrating and you, you'll read the Facebook posts and what these these groups are talking about everybody's wound up tighter than a two-day clock that they can't get uh, anybody to come to the table for this and these guys go out and do it for free and that particular event was a couple of, uh, of folks but I was involved in one a, a few years back I think the mayor was there I think Councillor Kirby was there uh, there was 25 or 30 people up there picking up shingles and nails and screws and you name it I mean it, it was a good going on um, and the details can be worked out here and I just like I just caution the rest of the council to remember this is a, a volunteer group coming in to say hey you know we're doing this already can you just help us out a little bit with it and to make a statement to say that only helps one user group we do that for tons of user groups we gave fifty thousand dollars to the user group that just presented to us here for pump track that's one user group right so to me to, to make a statement like that is not a fair reflection um, you know, it doesn't have to be just this one user group. If we're smart enough to figure it out, we can get the trailer. Maybe they lease the trailer out to other, other groups or bring it to other groups. My only fear in, in, in a trailer that is used by five or six different groups is the damage that happens to it, who's responsible for it. And that's the hard thing. And the same thing with District of Tumbler Ridge. DTR uses it, they rub the tires off on it, and the, you know, if it, somebody doesn't see it, that's the problem you get into. So to me, I don't know. $10,000 to that group to, to sponsor a trailer isn't a big cost in my mind for what we get out of it in return. Imagine the costs of union costs for us to go out and take the stuff out of the woods on our own. Thank you, Councillor. Um, one moment. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you in, in the effect that it's unfair to say that it's one user group because it may be one user group performing a service, but it benefits the entirety of our community. And they've been, you know, like to hit a little more home on the fact that They've been doing this at their own cost for many years. And at this point in time, I am inclined to listen to them if they say at this point, you know, the, the amount of damage or um, use done to their own personal equipment is coming at too high of a cost. Like, I think that is something that we should be highlighting at this point. Um, Councilor Medinsky? Thank you, Norbury. Yeah, and that's why I brought up the community involvement and how much of it was there. I don't think it's fair for one user group to come in and say that they should be the ones being solely responsible for doing this. I think they should get other people involved as well instead of just themselves as the ATV club. Because um, I, I, I find it very disheartening when I go in the backcountry and see stuff like this too and, and or hear about it and I might have had the day off and was able to help or I knew some people that were able to help out that day or whatever, right? So, I, like, because I hear it after the fact and then it's, it's just... Um, kind of like only a few people that are getting involved and so um, it can be a lot more efficient if other people are involved so for them to just um, come in is, is I totally understand why they're doing this and, and I really appreciate it but I'd also like to see other um, alternatives that can uh, inhibit the illegal dumping practices if possible um, whether it's uh, no access areas or uh, signage, even though I'd have to recuse myself or something like that. But I think there are um, other options as well to help because, like, what's the purpose of, of buying a, v, uh, a trailer and then, yeah, we're cleaning up 
but nothing's getting preventing people from dumping. So there has to be a preventive measure there as well, other than us just keep on hauling it out. So we're just a secondary dumping service going to the landfill site. So I think we have to find another option for catching people or whatever trail cams will place. For okay, so uh, Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Chair. Uh, a question through to Mr. Wall. With this letter uh, presented by Mr. Croston, is can we put this into our next report or for budget or do does the ATV club need to put in a grant and aid for this funding or we can just move it right to getting a report so um my, my own counselor uh mr wall um i believe at this point we could potentially make a motion to add it to um regular council meeting so we can either ask staff for a report we can we can make a motion like to add to the next council meeting yeah um to add this to the budget discussion, to purchase it, whatever, but um, yeah. Yes. Counsel. My question is, are they, when is the, when do you have to have your grant and aid in? Is, is that time passed already? It has. So, okay. Thank you. Councillor Howe? Oh. I, I was going to mention a, uh, perhaps a staff report, but uh, Councillor Mazinski uh, touched on something that's important, is the preventative aspect of this, and it's not really up to the ATV club to worry about preventative. Um, but it is, in my mind, partially to do with the district's Tumblr Ridge and, uh, and the rap group, the reporter poacher and a polluter. And this last particular one was reported to the rap group. And I'm curious as to why nothing was followed up. Um, and you know, I'd like staff's thoughts on that. Is this something that can be dealt with by bylaw? For the area that it was in, the, up by the uh, up by the um, sanctuary yeah. valley. Thank you. Um, or is this something that RAP was supposed to have dealt with? And you know, perhaps you know, this is the the time to start writing those types of letters to find out why why it didn't happen. Like, I'd like to have your staff's take on it. Mr. Wall. Yeah. So just a couple things. So the the deadline for Grant and aids has passed, um, but that's not to say council couldn't contribute if you wanted to. You can just waive your uh, grant and aid policy. If you're going to deliver any sort of funds to the group for this, you're going to have to do that anyway, unless you ask them to wait till next year. Um, so that's uh, the process that council could go through. As far as the dumping goes, we can take it people by law for um, polluting. Uh, it's the issue becomes on these things. Uh, the burden of proof that makes it difficult but if you have identified someone who's done it and you've gone to wrap they should be dealing with it the next step would be to just work with the RCMP on this and say this has become a community priority and a community policing issue for us the RCMP have significantly wider latitude on what they can do with this type of pollution than bylaw can I, I the, the bylaw fine is probably around two hundred and fifty dollars or somewhere around there Whereas when you get into the provincial RCMP, you can get up to two years in jail for doing something like this and multi-thousand dollar fines. So that would probably be a good step is for uh, the mayor or whoever council designates to sit down with the RCMP and say, this is one of our focuses. And possibly similar to what we did with the Bear Smart program, um, start to push that information out to the community. When these things come out, these are the people to contact. They can be our bylaw as well, and the bylaw can work with the RCMP, but just the ability for the RCMP to deliver you know, wildly more um, severe punishments for these uh, incidences is where it probably needs to end up. Um, and then on the, the proposal in general, because it sounds like council's talking about two different, if you go down this path, two different ways to go down. One, uh, to, to purchase or give the money so that the um, ATV club can purchase it, which is fine, or the other for the district to own it. And then we could rent it out. You can build that into our... Um, Fees and charges bylaw, it opens it up to anybody in the community unless you create a specific policy to restrict this to only nonprofit groups. Um, the insurance on it, because this is like, hey, you have to insure your trailers like a vehicle, that would be the question I have. What is ICBC uh, going to do for insurance if we say, hey, we're going to have this, oh, but by the way, we're going to let anybody in town rent it? Um, whether or not we could get that type of insurance and what that would cost would be the big question. Thank you, Mr. Wall. Uh, Councillor Kirby. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think Mr. Wall 
gave us a few good points there is it's like giving the ATV club a trailer is just letting people know out there go and dump more stuff because now we've got a trailer to haul it all away you know <laughs> instead of you know actually dealing with the issues that we have like last thing I want to see is a is a gate at the bottom of the racetrack and a gate at the bottom of Sanctuary Valley I mean we've already opened we changed the hours of our transfer station we've we're now bringing in bins that are going to allow shingles you know I think that's definitely something we have to look at is working with the RCMP and RAP and, and, and finding people. The last vehicle picked up there, I'm sure there was a name, they were changing, they were actually doing mechanicing up there and then just left it there. So, you know, I agree. I think the ATV club has done an amazing job. I've helped as like Councillor Howe has and, and absolutely we want to thank him for that. But what is the proper thing to do on how to deal with the backcountry and all the garbage? Um, I, I do agree. I, I am for looking into options for sure on this, and I think it should come back to, to a report to Council. Thank you, Councillor Kirby. Um, so I, I think there's a potential option here if we do go down the route of purchasing this uh, um, trailer. We could potentially build, um, you know, as, as Mr. Wall pointed out, like in um, our, uh, our fees bylaw, and then we could potentially... Um, have different organizations using it for particular purchases can you know use it for no charge or or what have you then it can be utilized by other people um yeah because um i do like the idea of having this option for other people council how i'm more in favor of of giving them the money to purchase a trailer depending on what they come in with with an actual cost and, and the reason being is that I don't think I want to waste the time of people at the district of Tumblr Ridge, uh, the staff employees and, and maintenance and the tire wear and, and the insurance and does this guy have the right license to drive the trailer and did they overload the trailer and, and whatever. If, if, if we could just say, you know what, we appreciate what you've done for the community. It, it, it's been well worth uh, ten or $12,000 for you to purchase a trailer and go on with it, let them do what they want with it. Maybe this is a source of income for them for their own uh, organization. Getting into renting of trailers, we are starting to compete with business in Tumblr Ridge. That is a bit of a concern for me. That's why I, I'm leaning more towards, ask them what is the amount of money, show us the trailer you want. If it satisfy your needs, you know, up to whatever, 7,000 pounds or whatever they want to haul a regular vehicle, if it's over that, they've got to get a piece of heavy equipment from somebody else in town and give them some business or whatever, you know, maybe maybe that's the route we go. But that to me is where I'd like to head for now. It keeps us away from insurance. It keeps us away from maintenance. It keeps us away from staff time. It, you know, in the long run, what's ten or $12,000? Councilor Majinski? Thank you, I think Mayor Norbury. Um, and it's, it's a kind of a funny timing for us too because we are putting in those bins for shingles and uh, drywall. So we might see a lot less of the smaller dumping, I guess, or lighter weight stuff that's gonna be thrown in there. Yeah. But for, for vehicles, um, I could see how this uh, trailer would be utilized and I'm definitely on uh, Council House side on having them purchase it and they take on the quote unquote liability on, on, a, on a vehicle like that. Because uh, if we had district staff having to open up a gate on the weekend so that they can go and haul stuff out on the Saturday or Sunday, then who's going to be in charge of opening the gate all the time? It can get really complicated, I believe. Mayor, did you uh, unmute your phone? Nope. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll jump in there. Yeah, that's another perspective that, uh, you know, thank you for eliminating Councillor Howe and that. You know, if we if we go down potentially purchasing and, and renting, then we are competing with business. Um, and then, yeah, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure how that would work. If um, one person owns something, can someone else insure it and and get all of that stuff on there? Like it, it kind of creates a murky situation. Um, yeah, we are we are past our grant and aid time. This did come in before grant and aid um, in December, but uh, so I mean, yeah. We could potentially reach out to them and, and ask them to come out with a formal request, talk to other organizations, because um, there could be other funding out there. Um, Mr. Wall. Mr. Chair. Oh, one, one second, Mr. Wall. Yeah, go ahead, Mayor Bertrand. I'm just curious. Uh, I heard a couple comments about the uh, construction waste bins. I'm not 
positive if those are approved to come in. I, I think there, I, I know there was a report, but I, I don't know of any confirmation that we are getting them. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Wall? Yeah, sorry, that was the comment I wanted to make. Just to clarify, it's in your um, agenda for <laughs> January 20th meeting, so they haven't been confirmed yet. Uh, but if Council feels that strongly about it, then maybe they will be. But no, they haven't been approved yet. Uh, oh, you can't say your worship anymore, can you? Uh, Mayor Bertrand. <laughs> you, can, uh, you can say your worship. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, it, just an option that Council can consider. Um, if the real need for the cleanup is just vehicle removal, you don't even need to go down the purchase of a trailer. You could just set aside funds in the operational budget and when vehicles are identified, we could uh, hire a private company to haul those out as well. And that might make things easier on the ATV club. So just something to consider. Is there um, any more discussion? Is there anything, uh, a motion somebody would like to make to move to our next agenda? Councilor Al? Put a motion forward that we ask for a staff report about options to purchase a trailer for the uh, ATV club. I believe the proper procedure, um, we second that motion, we vote in, and then uh, it'll go on to our next agenda. Uh, seconder, mm -hmm. Councillor Kirby. Um, any more discussion? Is there any discussion on that motion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? All right, that'll be on our next agenda. Okay, thank you everyone for the discussion. Um, Moving down to 8.1, volunteer appreciation. Um, now I understand that a few councillors had a meeting, a few councillors had a meeting um, about uh, volunteer appreciation events. Um, would any of any of those councillors like to start us off? Councillor Lehman. Okay. Yeah, we've met with uh, Roxanne. Are we on number seven, sir? Oh. We're on eight or seven, what are we doing? Moving on to eight point one. We're not doing seven. Seven point one. Seven point one. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead here. Okay. Um, moving back to seven point one. Thank you, Council Howell, for the reminder. Um, the remuneration committee report. Um, anybody like to make a recommendation to receive for information or discussion? Councilor Howell. For discussion. Seconder. Councilor Kirby. Anyone like any discussion? All in favor? Okay, it is over for discussion. Councilor Howe? So I, I'd want to move all the recommendations for uh, a vote for our next council meeting. That's what I'd like to do. I'll second. And we can pick them off individually one by one in that meeting. They don't have to all be as a group, but individually we should vote on all of the recommendations that were provided. Um, before we move to that motion, well, I guess you made that motion, Councilor Howe? Sure. Seconded. And seconded. Um, okay, so before, um, motion seconded, we'll bring it up for discussion then. Um, I believe that ca uh, staff will be bringing up a report. I would like to um, see a report before um, we, we make votes on these recommendations. I understand that we all um, we have, a chance, have had a chance to read the report, um, but in the interest of receiving all information that we possibly can, I'd like to see what the staff has to say. Other discussion? Councilor Howe? So I, I would be open to that if, if we could get the report from staff and then vote on it, rather than get a report on staff, wait for another two months to go by, then vote on the recommendations. You know, to me, this is long overdue. We we had a professional group come in and tell us what the wages were supposed to be. They told us what your wages are. You were good. You don't have to change them. New council comes in. No, we need higher pay, and we go out to a remuneration committee, and then we're going to delay it again. So, in the interest of taking care of this and getting it done, we get the staff report. We vote on it right after the staff report. I'm, if that's the direction that we're going here, I'm good with that. You understand what I'm saying? Mr. Wall? 
that would be the intention. The staff report would cover uh, would cover regional best practices, would cover the recommendations of the committee, the staff's recommendations if and where they differ, and then that one report will have all the information council heard would need to make decisions at that point where you want to go. Councilor Kirby. Thank you, Chair. Would that also include the data portion that we were looking at including in this remuneration? Mr. Wall. I'm going to ask the remuneration committee after this meeting to um, make a follow-up addendum and, and put what their recommendation is regarding data. And then we'll include that in the report as well. So as long as the committee can do that, then we should be okay with this. Councilor Kirby. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And one other question. Um, when you were meant when um, health benefits were mentioned in this report, that was extended health. What are the options for counselors right now for health care or health plans? Mr. Wall? Uh, right now, your options and then what's recommended in the report is not. So okay. there is coverage for counsel for accidental death or dismemberment if you're on uh, district business. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that is, that would be covered under, uh, although it's not quite clear, it is believed that that would be covered, covered under work safety. If you're traveling on district business, you are covered through workers' compensation and work safe, although there is tests that need to be had in the court of whether or not that's going to stand up. So I don't want to tell you guys for sure when you're working in district business, you are 100% covered under WCB and work safe. Um, but having said that, we do have our own insurance that covers for accidental death and uh, dismemberment. So outside of that, there is nothing. Okay, thank you. So, so I believe at this point in time, we will be voting on all of these um, recommendations in the future. Um, we're going I'd like to do it with um, staff's staff report at the same time. Are, are we okay with that? Okay, but I believe we do have a motion on the floor to add all of the... Um, recommendations to be added to a council meeting are we okay with just waiting for a staff report so um, I would recommend that we vote down this current motion and, and we wait for the staff report to come in to, to be voting on it okay oh, sorry councillor Howe. yeah just based on the information mr. wall provided it sounds like exactly what he's gonna give us okay. he'll vote on for that time okay. I just want to make sure it's expedited all right so all in favor of the current motion Opposed? Oh, defeated. Thank you. Was a, look, <clears throat> I was for that, but just, yeah, stay alert. Stay. I'm still thinking about dismemberment. Okay, sorry about that. Back on track. 8.1. Sorry, it's my first one. <laughs> 8.1, volunteer appreciation. Um, yes. Councillor Lehman, can you give us a, um, a report on, or an update on what you guys talked about? Yes. Uh, Councillor Majinski and Councillor Kakauka and myself met with Joy and Roxanne, and we came up with the, the idea of instead of council or the volunteer groups picking their volunteer of the year or however you want to do it is to have somebody outside of those groups actually go over and pick somebody for uh, volunteer of the year or just to be recognized as a volunteer and have it a, a year obviously a, a yearly thing um, Councilor Kirkhouse thought that maybe it should be um, the uh, BC ambulance staff or um, the teachers or somebody outside of the uh, volunteer groups because it's you're obviously going to pick somebody from your organization or the chances are so just to keep it more unbiased just to have somebody that's neutral and they would only have to meet probably once a year or maybe twice, but it, it should be fairly short. But it would, I think it would simplify things a little bit, but that's what we thought. Okay. Um, 
I'll, I'll jump in there. Um, as, as, as a member of a few of the volunteer organizations that, um, that nominated people, I'll, I'll speak for them, and at least the ones that I was a part of, and, and they or, or we actually enjoyed the, the nominating from within. It seems like it would make a little more sense that the individual organizations would recognize who put the most effort in, like um, the Society for Children's Needs or Success, Success by Six last year. We voted one of our hardest working members. You know that that went out and volunteered, and and at the the dinner that was presented, um, and speaking with the people that were in attendance, they enjoyed that combination dinner slash. Um, you know, it was like a little 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 more than a barbecue, but not quite the gala. And then there were the prizes that were given out at the at the event. It seemed to go really well with the organizations because they're able to say this is our champion. They did really well with us. Um, before I go on, anyone else have anything? Councilor Majewski. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Councilor Krakowko mentioned that he would like to see something significant given to the individual for the year as well, whether it be on a plaque with their name on it or something. So it's more than just a dinner and a pat on the back. It would be something more. And, and it's somewhere to be put in the community center or somewhere where it can be visually seen. And then uh, year after year it could be... Um, uh, grown upon so it's not just a one-time thing or it's kind of almost like a, a legacy of you know who was very active in the community and uh, one other uh, non-partisan group would be probably uh, the Chamber of Commerce or someone like that that um, could potentially um, have uh, recommendations for uh, nonprofits profits that was brought up as well but um, it might be worth even talking to a lot of the nonprofits and the user groups. Uh, what would they like to see, and, and if they liked how the last one went? Councilor Lehman? Yeah, the uh, individual groups would still pick their person or, or people, but then that other group would pick out of all those that are submitted and then pick the volunteer of the year. You oh, could well. still, all the user, all the volunteer groups would still pick the, their nomination for volunteer of the year, but then that small group would pick who the volunteer of the year is. So would, would you be going away with each group in, um, nominating their, their volunteer and, and just moving to one? Um, I'm a little confused about if you had the conversation of how it went last year versus how you'd like to see it moving forward. No, everybody still picks, like the uh, the Lions, the uh, the Rangers, uh, the uh, health, Children's Health Needs. They still all pick you. All all those people would still be in that list, but you pick one out of all of those to be Volunteer of the Year. So you, you all those people would still be there at this event but one person maybe two could be picked so that they would get special recognition for that year that's all Let's see mr chair yes mayor would you like to jump in there yeah so just curious councillor lehman um so you're you're talking about adding a volunteer of the year of war so uh, were you also talking about box and, and hanging up in the community center as well um what about uh lifetime achievement awards or any is was there any other ideas as far as appreciating volunteers besides the dinner and besides what we have right now we did we did discuss that and uh it's something else that you could put you like because there's so many volunteers that you could pick as volunteer of the year. Maybe on the first year you could pick five and put them on that on that plaque, and then after that you you know you pick one or two to add to the plaque each year. But I think it's because there are so many, and that lifetime achievement is something that we discussed as well. So. But I think you could leave that on, I don't know, I leave it on the, uh, uh, what is it, Volunteer of the Year plaque. Because they'd still be recognized. 
Councilor Marjinski. Thank you, Acting Chair. To answer your question a bit more further, uh, Mayor Bertrand, they kind of discussed it a bit and we're thinking to start it as a clean slate because we didn't want to go back into the previous years of who had done uh, a lot of the volunteering because then that plaque would be filled up quite quickly uh, from the previous people that have volunteered because there are some that have volunteered extensively in this uh, community for the years and it, it would almost be kind of um, dishonest to not actually put them on there right off the get-go but we thought just to start start from fresh and going forward um, cause then because there, there would always be somebody missed out or we'd have to play catch up on some of those individuals so it'd be going forward um, is there anything else um, council like to discuss is there is there a recommendation from uh, the, this um, group that well, I would like to bring forward anything coming up in council meetings I just I don't know I, I think we we probably need a little more discussion on to see what each council would like it I don't know if we need to uh, get in touch with the volunteer groups but I think it's something we should be able to decide maybe on our put it on a, another council meeting and then have a vote and see what we want to do Fair enough. I mean, I know, I know from my perspective, um, volunteer someone who attended last last year. Um, it was it, last year's event was was very well done. You know, thank you to uh, the district for putting it on, and then, and I think it's important that we keep this on the radar. In that, so much work is done by volunteers in our in our community, and uh, we need to make sure that. This event is, is for them. We can find a way to keep them happy and recognize all the work that they've done. And that's something that we, because you recognize them, but, you know, it seems to be kind of forgotten after a while. I mean, some people remember, but if, and that's kind of why we thought a plaque would be nice, because then that name is always there. And, you know, that's something that they could be proud of. Thank you, Council Lehman. Okay, seeing no further discussion, we'll move down to um, 8.2, grant writing. Okay, would anyone like to open uh, discussions? All right, I'll, I'll start us off. Um, so we do have a report from the grant writer this year. Um, speaking with our, uh, our grant writer and, and staff, I learned a little bit of how the um, payment structure works in that we do receive um, $11,000 from the NDAT for a grant writer position. And currently um, we have a um, agree agreement with the Chamber of Commerce to operate the grant writing. Um, in previous discussions, we have discussed about potentially hiring a, di a district grant writer or if we want to keep this with another organization. I think it is important to highlight that the current grant writer um, has, hasn't uh, asked for the, the funds that the district has allocated to them because they felt that the, the grant writing um, up to this point hasn't required that and I think that is something worth noting and that if we did have a, a staff person I don't know if we would um, you know, have that opportunity to save some money in, in this, in this um, yeah any other discussion anyone like to discuss Councilor Marjinski thank you sure. uh, is there any possibility of, of this uh, grant writing position going out to RFP or out to a public individual to uh, consider grant writing as a uh, potential uh, source of income or do we want to stick with our uh, going with things as it is um, I think I think currently the um, the agreement that is in place is that this was a fee for service that the chamber has applied for um, and it was brought through um, a few years ago Councilor Kirby thank you chair um, I just want to make a note that there is, if 
there is an option to use a grant writer for specific um, grants through the PRRD, which is available to Tumbler Ridge as well, along with our grant writer that we have. Thank you, Councilor Freeman. Yeah. Councilor Howe? Mr. Chair? Yeah, I'll have you right after Councilor Howe, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> so I remember uh, Councilor Krakowka talking uh, a, a bit about this, and I don't want to speak for what, what he said on it, but uh, in, in discussions that we have had here, I thought it made sense perhaps to look at the grant writer as an opportunity for the District of Tumbler Ridge to be more successful uh, in obtaining grants uh, under the direction of Mr. Wall and his staff. Um, after discussing this uh, with Ms. Tremblay, uh this, this in particular, which I didn't quite get, is directly for community groups. I thought that, the, I, and I knew Mr. Wall when he went after some of the grants, that's his baby. He's, he's the one that goes after that grant, like, like the sewer grant, right, like the, where we did the upgrades to the sewer. I thought that was something that could be handled by the grant writer, but it's not. Mr. Wall takes care of those types of things. And that was my concern on it that, you know, is there an opportunity to make this a full-time position in something that we maybe generate a quarter of a million dollars for the community, that if we made it a full-time position, we would be more successful in getting two or three million dollars. You know, kind of uh, get more bang for our buck is, is what I was looking at. And after good discussions here, I, I don't think maybe that's the right way to go. I think the way that we have it structured right now is probably fine for the community groups. And that is uh, what what her uh, her job is, number one. And uh, the way I understand it too is that the DTR can actually uh, uh, reach out to uh, Jerry Lynn and say, hey, you know, we could use some help with this particular one that she may have better expertise with and she's all ears. She jumps in and, and helps them along the way. So, uh, you know, unless I got something from Mr. Wall that said, you know what, I think we need a full-time grant writer um, I, in, the, in the district or, or somebody that Mr. Wall could control for 50% of the time in grant writing and 50% in asset management or whatever. Uh, I, I, to me, I don't think this warrants much more discussion than the way it is. I think the way that it's structured is fine. Uh, and the only thing is I'd like to see is a, maybe a, a more often we'd see a report of, of what we are getting from the community grant writer um, and, and also from Mr. Wall's group as well. You know, just something that's a, a topic of discussion once a year. This is what we, we got for grants in the community and this is what uh, Mr. Wall was able to get, uh, Mr. Wall's staff was able to get in grants as well. Uh, I, I don't think staff, uh, they don't miss the fact that they want free money just like we do. They pay taxes in town just like we do, right? So that's my take on it. It doesn't need to change. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just wanted to clarify the, the PR grant writer is an option that we could uh, opt into uh, as far as funding goes if that was an option. Um, also, I just wanted to ask for uh, you to elaborate there about, you had mentioned something about not taking money um, or, or not invoicing for, for something there. I'm not sure what you were talking about there, Mr. Chair. Yes, so I can elaborate to that. I believe um, um, the, the Chamber did not, they were allocated um, another $20,000 um, as, as per their fee um, for service this year and chose not to um, invoice the district for that amount because um, throughout the year the chamber has not had um, the service up and running full time. So the current chamber manager felt that it was um, prudent to not invoice the district for that amount of money. And also, also, I'll speak a little more into um, to Councillor Howe had had to say in that, you yeah I've I've learned from discussions that a lot of these grants require a lot of special um, a lot of special information and um, to apply for and it makes sense that the individual organizations within the district within the district apply for them as there's so much um, speciality needed to fill out the grants and if it was put to the grant writer it would likely need to be duplicated again in interview with the uh, individual departments. 
Did that answer your question, Mr. Mayor? Yes, it did. Thank you. Just wondering, without that invoicing, though, is is that going to affect the NDIT funding, or or how does that work? I'm not sure. Mr. Wall, the amount that the chamber has requested and the information that they have provided should allow us to access the full amount of NDIT funding for last year. Any more discussion on uh, 8.2 grant writing, councillors, Mr. Mayor? Okay. Um, moving down to 8.3. Um, before I'd like to get into this discussion, um, I'd like to make a motion that we, move, that we move this to a regular council meeting. I believe that this is a you know discussion whether we should be giving it um, or we shouldn't. Any uh, any flavor for that, council? Move it to a council meeting. Second that. Councillor Kirby, um, any discussion on that? Councillor Howe? Why was it put on a PNP for discussion? We can't discuss it. I'll answer that. Um, speaking of staff, um, they recognize that this is um, should have been put on to a regular council meeting, but, that, but before that was recognized, it was put on this agenda. Mr. Wall? That was forwarded here by council in your last meeting. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, had a chance to discuss it with the mayor and acting mayor, but with everybody being out of town by the time we got direction to move it to a regular meeting, the agenda was already out. Ms. Councilor Howe? So, so will we receive information from staff on this then? Or will this just be the exact same thing, search and rescue community center passes? Well, yes or no? Will there be information from staff? This is our information gathering opportunity. I know that they did come in and they presented, but like, you know, the, that information can, can be lost in translation. I don't have anything written in front of me. I know they talked about volunteer hours and they talked about how many calls they generally take on in a year. I think it was 10, but one a month they do, roughly like that. As they have training. Is that type of information going to be in this? So, so Council, how are you asking for more information from Search and Rescue before we make a decision? From, from staff, yeah. Yeah. Is there any is there any particular information that you'd be looking for? Yeah, that, you know how how many call outs per year, um, how how many how many days of volunteer do they do, uh, I how many days of training is required to become a full fledged member, um, that type of stuff, right? I, be I believe in their last presentation they gave all that information. It was a presentation though, it's not written, right? It was a it was up here on the screen. Welcome to council. This is what we'd like to talk about. Like I, I want something in writing is what I want. Would, would the minutes from that meeting be uh, sufficient? Mm. It, it could be. I guess I'd have to review what we had there for, for the minutes, but I, I don't know that the minutes will capture everything that was in that report or the presentation, I should say, in a report. Okay, well, there there is a motion on the floor. Um, so, and that motion is to uh, move this to a regular council meeting to be... Uh, Voted on, seconded by Councillor Kirby. Um, is there any more discussion on, on that motion? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Okay. Um, so that moves us on to uh, question and answer period. Is there any uh, questions from the gallery pertaining to this uh, agenda? Mr. Drever, okay. uh, well, um, excuse me, Mr. Drever, I would like it in a question form. Uh, okay, so, so a Jeopardy format. Uh, <laughs> what is uh, volunteer appreciation is a relatively cheap thing to do, and it's something that can really help volunteers recognize their efforts. I would advise council to just to sit and think on it a little bit more, and especially with potentially having multiple categories of awards that people could win. And I agree with Chris, and I'll say that. Their council member and say that there's I, I thoroughly enjoyed last year and having the groups being able to nominate their individuals. So just I I'd advise a little bit more time you spend on that and develop a, a thorough work structure for the amount of effort that community volunteers put in. 
So that was an interesting phrase question, but uh, <laughs> well, um, Mr. Mr. Drever, I believe you know a few of the members that uh, sit on that working group. So I would I'd recommend that you reach out to them and express your concerns. Well, it really wasn't a question, more of a statement. So if, if you if you like to have a conversation, you know, you can, there's, there's time afterwards. Is there any other uh, questions from the gallery? Ms. Schoenberg, yes. If any of the council has questions about my report, it's kind of odd. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Schoenberg. All right, so we'll move down to uh, 10.1 adjournment. A motion to adjourn. Seconder. All in favor? 